and I'm a PhD student at CIE in uh, Bruyère le Châtel, and uh, Jean-Paul Lebron is my supervisor. So I'm going to talk about the um, functional uh, integral formalism, which is at the heart of my work. So um, first of all, I, I will uh, start with the context. So um, uh, what we're trying to do basically is to design um, accurate and computationally affordable uh, methods uh, to describe uh, strongly coupled um, quantum systems, which can host um, collective behaviors like superfluidity, for example. And this can be um, achieved by exploiting different representations of quantum mechanics. So I'm listing three of them here. Uh, so they were all um, discussed in details in previous talks, so I won't be too long on that. Uh, but my point here is that uh, the Green's function and the density functional based um, representations can both be uh, implemented in the path integral formulation of quantum mechanics when uh, combined with field theory. And the merging of, this, um, of these two approaches uh, gives rise to the functional integral formalism in which I'm going to focus. And uh, this formalism actually enables us to uh, first uh, perform a systematic treatment of quantum correlations, which basically means that um, we can control our approximations in this scheme. And secondly, uh, we can also introduce very readily uh, collective degrees of freedom to grasp uh, static correlations effects. And uh, this can be done in several ways. I'm uh, quoting two of them here. So there are the rubar satanovich transformations and uh, introducing the source coupled to composite operators. And um, we'll actually discuss further these uh, two techniques uh, in uh, next slides. So uh, first of all, in the first section, I will um, introduce the main objects I have to manipulate in this functional integral formalism. And then in the second section, I will uh, focus on the subpart of uh, this formalism um, to, uh, that actually enables us to deal with the uh, functionals of Green's functions and density functionals. And finally, I will um, show uh, some of my recent results and finally uh, give uh, some concluding remarks. Okay, so let's start with the concept of generating functional. Um, so if we consider a probability distribution, f of x, it is uh, characterized by a moment generating function, m, that we can differentiate with respect to its argument, s, to get all the moments of the distribution, like uh, the mean value, the standard deviation, and so on. And um, in the same way, by analogy, uh, we can introduce the generating function of a quantum theory uh, called z here, which is basically a partition function, that we can um, differentiate with respect to its argument, j, called the source, to get all the correlation functions of this quantum theory, and from which we can actually calculate any observables that we want. But the only difference here is that uh, the role of uh, the probability distribution, f of x, is now played by um, the exponential of minus the classical action in Euclidean time. And uh, um, the integral here, is no longer a standard Lebesgue integral, but it's actually a functional integral over uh, the field psi, which is a number valued quantity. It's not an operator. And another, another um, functional of interest for us is the um, uh, Schinger functional, which is defined as the logarithm of, um, the, of, of Z. And it actually generates all the connected correlation functions. And the last functional of interest for us is uh, the effective action. Um, it is defined as the Legendre transform of the Schwinger functional. So I recall here uh, the definition of the Schwinger functional I've given in the previous slide. And if you uh, Legendre transform this W functional, uh, you get the so-called one particular reduce, reducible or one PI effective action. And uh, this is actually a functional of phi, which is um, the one point correlation functions. So far, I've only um, treated the situation where we are dealing with a single source J directly coupled to the field. But in principle, we can add um, any sources coupled to any combinations of the field that we want. And for instance, if we introduce an extra bilocal source, uh, K, coupled to bilocal combination of the field, 
then the Legendre transform of the corresponding uh, Schwinger functional yields the two particularly reducible or two PI detective action. And notably, since this derivative here um, can be rewritten in terms of the Green's function or the propagator G, uh, then in general, gamma two PI is basically a function of Green's function. And uh, finally, if um, by local source K here um, reduces to a local object, then the two PI effective action reduces itself to the two point particularly reducible or two PPI effective action. And this functional is actually, uh, actually depends on um, the diagonal part of the propagator G, which is basically the density. So gamma two PPI is density functional. So we can already see at this stage that there is a strong link between uh, the two PI and the two PPI effective actions on the one hand and um, the Green's function and density functional theory on the other hand. So um, in the next session, I will focus further on these two functional just to um, discuss their uh, property uh, in, in, in deeper way. So uh, let's start with the 2PI effective action. Um, so the question now is uh, how do we make actual calculations out of this functional? And first, uh, by noticing that all physical quantities are uh, obtained uh, in the configuration where all sources vanish, and we can deduce that um, any observables can be uh, calculated uh, by extremizing this 2PI effective action. And this gives us uh, the so-called gap equations here. And as a next step, if we expand and truncate this 2PI effective action uh, in these equations, we uh, get a set of self-consistent equations to solve. And uh, if we actually insert this expression here of the 2PI effective action, which involves uh, the Luttinger uh, functional, uh, we can show that the rightmost equation here actually reduces to a uh, Dyson equation. Now, on the other hand, um, we can also um, exploit the functional renormalization group approach. So the basic um, principle of this technique is to start our description from a um, well-known system that um, either doesn't contain any quantum correlations or that does contain quantum correlations that we, that we know how to treat exactly. So as a next step, we um, add um, into this uh, well-known system, uh, these quantum correlations progressively uh, so as to get as close as possible to the quantum system that we are trying to describe. And technically, um, this translates into uh, the U of the cutoff function R here. Uh, we basically insert this cutoff function R into the argument of this exponential function. And by doing that, all the quantities or the function of interest for us becomes dependent on this cutoff function and more specifically on the full parameter S. And then by differentiating this 2PI effective action with respect to S, we get the master equation of this approach, which is called the flow equation. And as, as a next step, if we expand and truncate this 2PI effective action, we can turn uh, this single flow equation into a tower of integral differential equations. And this is an approach that is actually very well suited to um, handle, to treat um, different instabilities in, on an equal footing. Um, so I'll stop here for the 2PI effective action and then go to the 2PPI effective action. So I recall that uh, this functional, this density functional is actually a specific implementation of the 2PI effective, of the 2PI effective action, sorry. And um, it can be shown that uh, this 2PPI effective action satisfies all the theorems underlying a DFT. I won't discuss this further. I just give the proof here. Uh, but the last thing I want to mention about the 2PPI effective action is that it can exp be exploited um, via a variation principle or via a functional renormalization group approach, just like the 2PI effective action. And so here are some results obtained from a, a zero dimensional toy model showing uh, the relative difference between the calculated ground state energy and the exact one versus the coupling constant of the model. And we can see that we are here looking at the strongly coupled regime of the model. 
Um, and um, actually in zero dimension, the two PI and the two PPI effective actions yield identical results if they are exploited uh, through a variational principle. And for instance, if, if we truncate this, uh, these effective actions at order h bar squared, which is basically the Hartree-Fock level, we obtain a relative error of uh, roughly 4% or less. And you can see here that this is a significant improvement as compared to standard perturbation theory, which are given by the curves here. And then these results can be uh, improved by going to higher order and by using resummation theory, because um, the series representing the effective actions in this case uh, are asymptotic. And then if we go to the functional normalization group approach, uh, the results obtained with the two PPI effective action are um, a little bit disappointing, but it actually enables in principle to um, design a DFT whose results are systematically improvable. And then for the two PPI effective action, the functional normalization group can actually be uh, formulated such that the flow starts uh, at the hartree fock theory. And uh, from this, we get actually excellent results uh, you can see here that the relative error at the first non-trivial order is around 2%, even in the strongly coupled regime. And this is reduced to 0.25% in the second non-trivial order. So, so far we have uh, already discussed one way to introduce collective degrees of freedom in our uh, description, uh, because we have introduced um, a source coupled to composite operator leading to uh, the two PI and the two PPI effective actions. Another way to introduce collective degrees of freedom is to uh, make use of the so-called Hubbard certain Lewis transformation. This is actually an exact transformation of functional integrals, which can be uh, formulated for standard Lebesgue integrals as well, as it is done here. And very often, these, uh, this approach uh, enables us to uh, actually very much improve our results. So I won't comment this further. Uh, I'm just showing you some results to prove and to illustrate what I say. Uh, but I directly move instead to my conclusion. Uh, so what we've seen uh, is that uh, Green's function and density functional based uh, theories uh, can be both um, reformulated in terms of functional integrals with the two PI and the two PPI effective actions. And um, actually the two PPI effective action enables us to uh, construct a quantum potential that is systematically improvable. And I also want, want to mention that I'm about to publish with my uh, supervisor um, two comparative studies of functional integrals, uh, of functional integral techniques, sorry. Um, and actually in, the, uh, in, in these papers, we are uh, paying particular attention to um, the, the ability of our techniques to uh, restore the symmetries uh, broken at our starting points in view to treat um, finite size systems in particular. And uh, actually this echoes the work of uh, several groups uh, who've been uh, quite recently trying to work out uh, DFT able to treat spontaneous symmetry breaking from the two PPI effective action. And so that's, uh, that's it for me. So thank you for your attention. Thanks. Uh, sorry, I was with the mute. So we have some, uh, we have five minutes more or less for questions. If you have any questions to ask. Yeah, if I may. Um, yeah, sure. Um, maybe I missed it, but in your slide eight, when you show what are the, the improvements of the effective action with respect to the um, to the perturbation theory, it, it seems that perturbation theory is immediately really explodes even in a scale that is uh, quite big. So maybe I miss it. Maybe it's obvious. But how comes that is so immediately wrong? Okay. So the, more specifically, the the model I am um, uh, treating here is a FIFO theory. And uh, the coupling constant of the model is uh, lambda over four factorial, lambda over 24. Uh, so uh, here I'm plotting my results as a function uh, versus lambda over 24. And perturbation theory is organized with respect to lambda itself. 
So uh, I think it uh, explodes very fast, uh, very quickly here, because uh, lambda here in this range goes from zero to 240. Ah, so it's rescaled even the x-axis. Yeah. yeah, actually, yeah. This is, this is because uh, the, 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 true, um, the, the true coupling constant of this model is lambda over 24, because this is the constant that multiplies uh, the interaction term in our Lagrangian. And uh, this, uh, this real coupling constant is around, uh, uh, well, is of the order of unity uh, in uh, nuclear physics applications. Uh, and it, this is what I'm focusing on, actually. I'm trying to discuss this in view of treating nuclear systems. Okay, so that means that here, when I consider one, that actually essentially is 24. Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. okay. It's so fast. Okay, yeah. then we have a question from uh, Emmanuel Fromage. Yes, uh, thank you very much, very interesting. So I have a, a very naive question. So uh, when you manipulate this effective uh, action, can you actually rewrite this in terms of uh, green functions? I mean, in a more standard way, li like uh, the new method you have with your effective action, can you say like, it's like constructing a new self energy or something like that? Or yeah. is, these are completely different languages? So uh, I think, yeah, the, um... Mm. I think uh, for, for, from the view of the variational principle, we actually built uh, diagra diagrammatically our 2PI effective action by making use of Vick's theorem. Uh, and uh, well, more specifically, what we will write diagrammatically is the, Lit the Littinger of art functional. And uh, I think that in this framework, uh, phi is expressed, so the, the phi functional is expressed only in terms of Green's function and of uh, and in terms of uh, vacuum expectation values, uh, I mean, well, to be more specific, uh, what I mean by vacuum expectation value here is one point correlation functions. So uh, if you consider that this one point correlation function is a Green's function, uh, is a one point Green's function, uh, then uh, basically uh, the two pi effective action approach, when it is exploited by a variational principle, then it completely amounts to rewrite. Uh, the Luttinger of art functional in terms of Green's function. This is, I think, totally equivalent to uh, the standard Green's function formalism. Okay. So I think that the analogy you're looking for is more obvious. Uh, if I go back to my previous slide, I think the analogy you're looking for is more obvious in the framework of this variational principle, because we are actually solving the Dyson equation in this approach. It's probably less clear, less obvious in the framework yeah. of uh, the functional randomization group. But all in all, it's easier to use this effective action. I mean, for developing new new approximations. That's what you are saying, more or less. Or yeah, totally. Actually, a um, uh, few um, few years ago, uh, I think uh, like thirty or forty years ago, people rather used a functional randomization group uh, applied to the Schwinger functional instead of um, the two pi. Uh, well, instead of the effective action itself. Uh, and uh, well, people, there, there were, I think, less technical problems to apply um, these effective action approaches. I mean, I mean there were less technical problems to uh, make calculation out of the effective actions instead of the Schwinger functional. So there is, there are really, uh, yeah, very technical advantage, uh, which are actually, I think, um, it's, it's a question of mathematical rigor. For example, you can avoid, um, I think that, well, to be more specific, um, in, um, in, in the framework of the FRG applied to this W functional, you have problems like uh, you have uh, distributions that are not integrated over. So you don't really know how to interpret them in your equations. And these problems are solved when, are solved when you uh, formulate your FRG for uh, an effective action instead of this W functional. So there are plenty of technical uh, reasons like that, uh, that, well, Suggest that, suggest that uh, the effective action is probably a, well, a, a relevant, a more relevant approach, more relevant choice. Okay, thank you very much. So maybe you have a, a last question uh, by Simon. Maybe you can ask yourself. Um, well, I was just wondering about your, uh, the, the slide towards the end, uh, the approximate results that some of them seem to overestimate and some others estimate the energy uh, and whether there is some uh, simple, you know, qualitative 
argument say which which way it goes so, you okay know. so you're, you're mentioning you're thinking about this plot in particular right right exactly yeah um well i i don't have any uh well for the approaches i am showing um here i don't have any arguments uh that could explain um why um results are above or below the exact solution. Uh, I think it can be shown by uh, uh, further studying the, the concavity or the, the convex properties of uh, the effective actions I'm using. Uh, so I think there, are, uh, there is a way to justify this properly. I just, I, I don't have it myself. Uh, maybe my uh, supervisor, uh, maybe Jean-Paul can comment further on this. Um, so it, it just depends here uh, when, when you have a look at the mathematical nature of the series we have, they are as asymptotic series and, and we know that they alternate sign. Uh, so basically what we call variational principle, uh, it's not really, uh, it, it's just a gap equation, but uh, when you will construct it order by order and here, uh, it's just to, to co side comment uh, with respect to Emmanuel. Um, what might be different from uh, the usual uh, grain function theory is here we organized the expansion uh, uh, with a loop loopwise expansion so in a power of h bar rather than in power of the interaction but uh, um, we also have designed uh, a variational uh, variational uh, uh, how do you say this um, Starting from a perturbation theory, we can make it variational by other techniques that we did not present it here. And uh, in, in this uh, in these frames, you will only overestimate the energy. But uh, for this uh, expansion, loopwise expansion, uh, we uh, depending on the order in H bar, uh, we know that we will go uh, up, down, up, down. We will have an alter alternance in sign. All right. Thank you. You're welcome.